As I prove every day, controversy is good business, and there's no greater media meat to feast on than a gaming meltdown on social media. On one level, it's a real shame that the mainstream news outlets and sources will deride gaming with a lot of negative qualities, that it alienates, objectifies, and encourages the youth to do horrible things. And while that can be true in some circles, it's not the goal of the industry as a whole. It's even worse when some of these controversies are blown out of proportion simply because people got their facts wrong. So let's go over some of these big bangs and iron out their creases so we might be able to put some of those false facts to bed nighty night, sleep tight. With this in mind, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com and these are 10 controversial video games everybody totally misunderstood. Number 10. Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number – The Graphic Rape Scene whether or not Hotline Miami's graphic violence is in bad taste is up for debate. I mean, I personally go with it being f***ing glorious. But there was one point in the second game which seemed to make a lot of gamers go, okay, this is possibly too far. And that was the presentation of a rape scene early on in the playtime. Now, that set alarm bells ringing in the media, and the word rape is never going to be a good thing unless it's preceded by a G and followed by the word juice. However, if they'd stuck with this scene rather than running to the printers, you'd see that as the trousers are dropped, an off-screen director yells cut. It's a movie, and while the film itself seems to be in bad taste, it's simulated. Now, that might not be a defensible shift, but it does change the tone of the act. Not that Australia bothered to check as they banned the game and cited that the player enters the woman as she kicks and struggles. Not true. Did not happen. Number 9. Mass Effect was a sex simulator Right, so Fox News once said that Mass Effect was a sex simulator, saying that there was full digital nudity and the ability for players to engage in graphic sex. They used the romance scene between the player and Liara as evidence of this. And I really use the word evidence in the loosest possible sense. Yet this short scene was used again and again to poke a game which was at least 50 hours of space opera and 2 minutes softcore lovemaking. It got so bad that EA stepped in and told the media effectively to check their facts, which most of them did, and suddenly this all seemed very silly. Still though, the damage was done, and anti-effectors still denounce this franchise to this day. False. Number 8. Tomb Raider – The Attempted Rape Sequence Oh dear, this is a bit of a mess. When the reason your game gets notoriety is because of the devs themselves, you know you f***. Up. Basically, in an interview with Kotaku, Ron Rosenberg, the producer of the revamped Tomb Raider game, said that Lara wouldn't be the same pistol-toting badass that she was, and more of a cornered animal you'd want to protect. He then went on to describe a scene where the enemies on the island would attempt to rape her, despite it not being in the game whatsoever. When the game came out, loads of people went hunting for this terrible scene, and could only come across a few quick-time instances where lads were getting a bit hands-on, but in a way that resulted in a death if you failed them, not a forced sexual encounter. Counter. The world didn't seem to care though, as the devs were dragged through the mud for putting such content in their game and changing her character so much, which is a real shame as it's a great game and totally not even true. Number 7. Bulletstorm – The Worst Video Game in the World In a story that's even weirder now that time has passed and it's now vanished in the ether altogether, Fox decided to go after Epic Games' Gear of War follow-up, Bulletstorm, in 2011. Why? Well, probably because the name sounded like something that Bart Simpson would play, but mostly because the game's way of making combos out of violent acts struck a chord with their production team. They even went so far as relating the ease of which players could settle into violent acts which do hold sexual names in the game with why a rise in rape was happening in the country at the time. That is some top-notch journalism right there. Number 6. Bully Glorified Bullying Rockstar pretty much have an open podium to the press with which to say, come on lads, what are you talking about, as they're frequently called to the stand for their games. Even when they took their crimes off the streets and put them in the schoolyard romper stomper style, Bully got some flack. Media outlets called the game a glorification of bullying, showing examples of Jimmy beating up other students and breaking their belongings. Now, while it's true you can do that, the game never actually encourages you to do it. You beat up people, sure, but it's usually those that attack you first, and there was no benefit or scoring to be got from these acts if you were the one instigating it. In fact, the game discourages these outbursts as you'll often need to be in good standing with the groups in order to get their help against the actual bullies of the school. Still, as we've learned so far, the new stampeded off and derided this game as the worst thing since school dinners. Number 5. Doom – Blamed for the Columbine Massacre 
After the abhorrent Columbine shooting in 1999, everything suddenly became fair game to be blamed for the events. From Marilyn Manson to video games like Doom, nothing was safe from the angry, pointing finger of the public. Many said that as Eric Harris, one of the shooters, had used a shotgun and that there was a shotgun in Doom, that these two events were linked. Yet there's no proof to show this to be true. And while there are arguments to be made for influential factors, such as Catcher in the Rye influencing John Lennon's murder, there's no definitive answer. It just seems that Doom was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Number 4. Grand Theft Auto 3 encouraged you to kill prostitutes. Have you ever heard about that game where you can kill prostitutes? That sentence became a byline for GTA 3 in the early noughties. Seemingly said by people who apparently believed there was nothing else to do in Rockstar's outstanding open-world title. It's certainly easy to look back on it now and brush all of the reactionary criticisms and in-depth studies under the rug, but at the time, the sheer amount of stories centering on how you could rob a hooker and not say on the fact you could drive a flaming vehicle into a crowd of people was astounding. The whole thing still reverberates around the cosmos to this day, as writer and journo legend Adam Sessler once noted in a recent radio interview that he'd been asked about a game where you can kill hookers for points, proving that there are still those who characterize their first open-world experience by targeting prostitutes rather than, say, all of the other stuff you could do. Number 3. Call of Duty branded as a terrorist simulator. No Russian. Two words more fearsome than I'm pregnant, or you're fired, or she's dead, and you're welcome to some people. Those people back in 2009 branded COD as a terrorist simulator because of this level, as you could mow down civilians at an airport. And you know what? That level, if we're being honest, didn't need to exist. It was used as bait for the world to get cheap heat and put butts in seats. Be quiet, it totally was. That being said, you didn't have to kill people, and it did sell the reasons as to why conflict breaks out between America and Russia in the game, and it really does make you want to kill Makarov, that is for certain. Was it in poor taste? Maybe. But was it designed to corrupt the youth, you know, the youth that shouldn't be playing this game in the first place? No, it wasn't. It was storytelling. On the f***ing nose storytelling, but storytelling nonetheless. Number 2. Grand Theft Auto 5, Trevor's torture scene was supposed to be fun. Here's another clumsy scene. As in, whoops, I dropped my wrench on your knees and then waterboarded you by accident, clumsy. The torture scene in GTA 5 is uncomfortable to play through, as it's so tonally different from the over-the-top action scene elsewhere, and it set the media ablaze as they lambasted this scene for promoting excessive violence and making it into a fun little minigame, which in turn would see us all become mass murderers. What seems to escape the notice of the press is that, much like a lot of this game, this was a satirical moment, done to make the world aware that this shit is perpetuated by the armed forces of our own great countries, especially America with its Guantanamo Bay beatdowns. Yet no one likes to have their armies have the piss taken out of them, so it was dressed up as a gateway drug into Murder Town. What it really was, if we're honest, is a scene that's more cack-handed than a sewage worker who's dropped his watch. And number one, Manhunt. It was implicated in a real murder. As Doom was the go-for for pent-up Columbine anger, Manhunt got listed during the unfolding of another truly saddening crime, one of 14-year-old Stefan Bakira being brutally murdered by Warren LeBlanc. LeBlanc was reported multiple times to be a fan of the game, so much so that the label for this act became the Manhunt Murder, the entire thing being reinforced by the fact that a hammer could be used to bludgeon gang members in the game and was also used in the crime itself. Rockstar must have known what they were walking into with a game literally about murdering people in as many gory ways as possible, but when all was said and done, the media got one massive thing wrong. It wasn't LeBlanc who owned a copy of the game, it was Pekira. This blew a rather large hole in the entire blame the game ideology, and the association between it and the killer was entirely the product of media sensationalism. Because of course it was. You're welcome. And that's our list. Got any other controversies which aren't about me, you shut up about those or I'll kill you, I swear to God? Then pop them down in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.